One of the reasons why Wikipedia is so messed up is that there is no formalized way of arriving at a decision about disputed questions. So you go there, you've got a question about, you know, what what should the, the definition of racism be? Extremely hot topic. It should be possible for people to come up with a bunch of different options and maybe have a a round robin competition or something like that and and actually get a legitimate choice that's not what they do they pretend that it is possible to have a consensus about these things and but the consensus is determined basically by the people in power on the topic you know whoever whoever has the most seniority or seems to have the most allies or whatever those are the people who basically declare the consensus so it's not a consensus it's just putting a, a cynical description on what is not a, a consensus at all the decision making process needs to be reduced to very specific editorial decisions to be made and then taking legitimate votes based on that I'm joined by Larry Sanger, who is the ex-founder of Wikipedia, <laughs> among many other things. Larry, welcome to the show. Oh, well, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Really good to have you here. First things first, I've never heard the term ex-founder before. What <laughs> can you explain? Can you explain what that means, please? Yeah, I, I made it up yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Or oh, that yeah. okay, a couple of days ago. Yeah. Um I I did a, a face or a, a, a Twitter uh, poll about it, and and uh, over fifty percent of the people thought it was a it was a good title for me to claim. Um, so I was once considered um, by everyone co-founder, even Jimmy Wales. Uh, but then then he started denying me the founder uh, the title, um, uh, like in two thousand and five, which everyone thought was ridiculous. Um, but he he was insisting on it. Um, so it's a little bit of a dig at him uh, um, for that. But it's also, um, whenever I tell people online that I'm co-founder of Wikipedia, um, especially in the last, I don't know, three or six months, um, they've started getting hostile toward me mm. personally. Um, it's like, um, you know, Wikipedia is out of control, they say now. Um, and, uh, you know, you are you must be the devil if you actually started it. Um, and and so I, I'm, I, I'm distancing myself from it because I have been a critic of Wikipedia um, for, well, I'm one of the first critics of Wikipedia, frankly, um, uh, outside of the very original naysayers. But, uh, you know... Um, yeah, and and then and then I've been gone for a long time. So sometimes when when um, I tell people I'm co-founder and and uh, but now I'm working on whatever my latest project is, they get confused and they think, oh, so you? They seem to assume that I just left it like a couple of years ago. No, I left in 2002. Um, I, I, I permanently distanced myself from the project in 2003, and I've been working on all kinds of other things since then. So, okay. but and I got also, it started. Yeah, and also world's first ex-founder, um, which is, <laughs> I think so. That's I think, right. I think I founded. I founded the term. Yeah, you are the world's. <laughs> you're the ex-founder founder. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so before we get into Wikipedia and where it's at at the moment, and also your exit, could you could you tell us the Genesis story? Could you tell us how it how it started on your side? Okay. Um, well, uh, I first met Jimmy Wales in the mid nineteen nineties through our our common interest in in philosophy. Actually, it was uh, Ayn Rand. I joined one of his mailing lists and later on made one myself and he joined that about philosophy and um we lost touch for a few years um but then uh i was sharing a idea that i had for what would later become a blog um around uh early 2000 and uh 
one of the people that I shared the idea with was Jimmy Wales. And he wrote back and he said, don't work on that. Work on this thing. Um, you'd be, you know, editor in chief of an encyclopedia. And, and I was like, wow, this sounds great. I, like that was practically my dream job. It's something if I wasn't going to be a, a professor of philosophy, which by that time I decided not to be, even though I'd, I was all but dissertation at the time. Um, uh, it would be, you know, like a, 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 an editor of an encyclopedia. That's sounded great. Um, so it was my job to to start uh, Newpedia, Nupedia, um, and that was to be built on the principles of open source uh, software. Um, so there was this guy. Uh, um, wrote a, a, a an essay called called the Cathedral and the Bazaar. His name is Eric Raymond. I was told to read this. It's still a great thing to read, um, and, and it, it explains how um, volunteers can get together to build great things online simply by sharing uh, a common vision and a common need, solving common problems. Um, but in a way that that results in something that that lives in the commons, um, and so that that's the that was the idea. And um, the problem was, we wanted Newpedia to be as trustworthy as possible. So we had this seven step really arduous editorial process, um, and not many people wanted to go through it. So we generated only a few dozen articles um, in the first year. Um, and that wasn't good enough. So, so we were well agreed that there needed to be a new um, uh, source of content for the project. Um, and so, I made some different proposals, and Jimmy Wales, he, he, you know, dismissed them all because they it would involve more coding. And then a friend of mine, um, January second, two thousand one told me about this software called Wiki Software, very uber geeky, um, where you go to a, a web page and you click an edit button and you can, you can edit the text of the page right there on the page and hit save and your changes are instantly live. Um, and it was an insane sounding idea, but you know, okay, I've, even by that time I had been living online for, um, you know, the better part of 10 years. And, and, uh, and so it wasn't that hard to imagine how it actually might work. Mm -hmm. um, so he, he got me excited enough ab about the idea that I, I started thinking, well, this could solve the problem that we were having with Newpedia. Mm -hmm. And so I um, ran home, actually, um, and made a one-page proposal to Jimmy Wales, um, basically saying set up this software for me to you know work on um a new project um you know and it, originally it was going to be the newpedia wiki but then the editors of of uh newpedia they the they were mostly PhD academics they didn't want to have anything to do with anything called a wiki mm. um it just did not have the sort of credibility and, and heft that they wanted to be associated with. And they were really good people, actually. There were some famous scholars even among them. Um, and, um, well, so we decided, uh, fine, we still want to do this. Um, it just won't be associated with the Newpedia brand. Um, and so I came up with the, the name Wikipedia, and we launched it. And um, internally on January 10th, I guess it was, um, I had already populated it with help pages and things like that. And we added some more, and some first articles, and then we, we launched it to the broader world and the, the, uh, the new PD community included um, on January 15th. And, and um, because there were already like 2,000 people on the Newpedia mailing list, which I had collected in the previous year. Uh, I and and uh, and an, an assistant that that we had um, collecting people, um, we uh, we actually were able to start um, 
you know, hit the ground running, basically. Um, and yeah, it just, I mean, it grew faster than anyone expected it to. Um, and it was sort of my job in the beginning to teach the the very idea of an encyclopedia article to people who wanted to use it. Because it was just basically an online blank bulletin board that anyone could write anything to. Hmm. So you could make dictionary definitions, you could write personal essays, you could do whatever. And and just gradually I pushed people toward um, you know, writing. An encyclopedia article begins with something like a definition or a general description of the term, you know, um, and and uh, and systematically lays out the the basic facts and explain basic policies like neutrality. So I, I was a big advocate of that, and I'm the the main author of of the uh, original version of of uh, Newpedia and Wikipedia's uh, neutrality policies. Um, and various other policies too. So, it it has changed a bit since the the uh, first year, um, since like the end of the first year, but not that much actually. So it's interesting. The biggest thing that has changed since then is that um, it it was sort of taken over by people that back then I would have considered to be trolls, um, and or at least um, people who. Uh, did not always have the interests of neutrality um, and uh, a serious um, approach to the subjects at heart um, often had access to grind and also were just difficult to get along with unless you played their game. So that's when that all of that started toward the end of the very first year of the really? project. Even that soon? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's actually why I ended up um, distancing myself. So after, like, uh, I worked on it for the first 14 months, got it really going. Um, Jimmy Wales actually um, basically, he's given me credit for coming up with the idea and later denied the same thing and, and um, that I was like essential to the project. But then it actually turns out that I wasn't essential to the project. I mean, it was set up. That's the nature of a wiki. It was set up so that it could be to a certain extent self-managing. It's mm -hmm. pretty robust, um, you know, and, um, but I, I uh, permanently distanced myself from the wiki um community like a year after being laid off because they couldn't afford to pay me basically um the the bottom fell out of the the dot-com boom of the late 90s and early 2000s and um yeah so they lost their contracts and were not able to pay any of the new people um anyway uh, yeah and a, a year after that I, I basically said this this project is you know becoming dominated by people that I would have considered bad actors before. Um, and uh, you're, you are absolutely driving away some of the very best people that we recruited for Newpedia. Um, and if this is the case, then it's going to end up being a real problem, you know? Um, and I think I, I was right. So I gave, I gave um, Jimmy Wales, an ultimatum. So you do something about these problems or I'm going to distance myself from the project permanently. And he simply denied that there were any of the problems uh, that I listed. And um, so I said, okay, bye-bye. And um, I, uh, I've been kind of a critic ever since. It's interesting to me when we have these these big projects, you know, I recently had Roger McNamee on from Facebook, uh, <laughs> early investor in Facebook, a personal advisor to Mark Zuckerberg. He's the person that brought Sheryl Sandberg in. And he said the same thing. His, his story tallies up with yours that very soon after he was involved in a project, which would end up changing the face of the internet, he was able to see a particular trajectory that this project was moving on, which concerned him. And he highlighted it very early. <clears throat> and again with that, the people who he highlighted it to, the powers that be said, don't think it's a problem. 
apparently they uh, his his analogy was that they treated him like a PR uh, a PR concern to be dealt with, mm-hmm. um, and uh, replied he sent. I don't know whether you did this, but I think he actually created quite a, an extensive press release slash proposal, which for him was um, a thesis laying out where the issues lay. It was his conceptualization of exactly what was going on. Uh, and mm-hmm. <clears throat> apparently the reply that he got from from Mark and from Cheryl was uh, similar to how a, a bad, uh, you would you would deal with something in a press release, bad press release, which I thought was really interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, well, um, I uh, I was nice. I didn't like uh, go to the, uh, make a public a spectacle of of the thing in in 2000 i i mean i i think i considered it um i didn't actually go public with any criticisms until 2004 um and that really pissed jimmy wales off one of the things he he responded um to that uh, on and it's it's on a, a now defunct um group blog called corrosion k u r 5 h i n .org anyway um, and he basically said, yeah, I was thinking of, of, uh, you know, hiring you back and getting you back involved, uh, but not now. Um, and I said, well, I wouldn't have come back if you had asked, dude, yeah. um, because, uh, that the problems were not getting better. Um, and, uh, some of the things that I saw, which is a tendency to ignore the neutrality policy, um, have gotten Worse. I mean, that's that's been a problem since I would say um, a couple of years after I left. It started when when one could begin to see an ideological tilt to at least some of the articles. Not always, um, but that that goes back to like maybe two thousand four, two thousand five. Um, then it started getting really pronounced, like two thousand ten. Lately, though, like in the last three or four years, basically in the same time that mainstream media has decided to abandon um, all pretense of objectivity, um, Wikipedia has more or less followed suit as far as I can tell. That's so that's so upsetting for me to hear. So first off is I, I did a little bit of background reading into this particular situation. I had a good chat with Vizzy, who's the guy who put, put me and you in touch. And um mm-hmm. As a part of that, I, I've definitely seen recently, I was watching Stephen Crowder, um, and he was he said something, this is only the other day, about the fact his Wikipedia page has been locked down, apparently. It's had malicious edits made to it and is now locked down. And this is, I'm, I'm not even kidding you, Larry, this was a week ago, and I heard this for the first time. And I, I'm, you know, I spend a fair bit of time on the internet, and I swim in these sort of circles. Hadn't heard mm-hmm. anything. And you're talking about something which is nearly two decades deep now with regards to this particular pathology that's going on. So <clears throat> I'm thinking about this and then... It's gotten worse, though, is, oh, is yeah. what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, but you saw the seeds of it, right? Back in the day. Oh, so, yeah. Can you explain to us, in your world, what would make the perfect wiki and how does that... Uh, how does that contrast with what you saw and then how has that begun to diverge further as, as time's gone on? Well, I'll give you first what I think is would be the perfect wiki and then I will I will give you um, uh, the way I think encyclopedias generally should go, which is not necessarily in the form of wikis at all. Got you. Um, Got you. So... Um, let me tell you about a couple of projects that I worked on and the, the, the very best uh, version of a wiki encyclopedia might combine both. Um, so I actually started a, a competing wiki project called Citizendium, um, as in the Citizens Compendium, nice. um, back in 2006, 2007. Um, and that was just when Wikipedia was enjoying its steepest growth curve. So it never really took off, but it had a really great start. Um, and uh, so the distinctive features that it had really weren't enough to really distinguish it from Wikipedia, but they were important differences. Um, one was you had to use your own real name. So anonymity, anonymity was not was not uh, permitted except in special cases, in which case um, we we allowed pseudonyms. 
right? So if somebody wanted, if somebody were a, a political dissident, they would have to trust me at least, and I would like, um, you know, approve of an account, um, and and then they could just like um, use a pseudonym. All right, um, that I think just takes care of a heck of a lot of the problems. It did in in the um, years that I was working on Citizendium, um, and the other thing that that helps basically solve a lot of the problems with Wikipedia is making all of the people who contribute to the project agree to a, a statement of fundamental principles. And um, now Wikipedia itself has, you know, some bedrock policies um, that, that it has stated, but the, uh, the, um, its commitment to neutrality in particular is, uh, is really, um, on the ropes. So, um, I, I think that, uh, if people were made to, to agree in advance with, uh, policies that, uh, you know, are specifically devoted to, um, strict notions of neutrality and um, and other uh, important policies. It, it goes a long way, basically. Um, and then a, a third thing is um, we had a essentially a, a a constitutional system of governance, a project governance. Um, it, it's not mob rule. Um, there are actual elections that people. Um, uh, People can actually change the rules through a legit legitimate process. They can adopt new projects through a legitimate process, and there that doesn't really exist on Wikipedia. As crazy as that might sound, it just doesn't. Um, so, um, and that's uh, in large part because they don't have one person, one vote. The reason for that is that, well, they allow anonymity. So that's one of the one of the problems there. Um, uh, so the other project that I want to tell you about is one that I've been working on um, since late 2007. So I have been uh, chief information officer of Everpedia, um, and uh, Everpedia is the encyclopedia of everything. That's why it's called Everpedia. And it's now built on the blockchain. So it's the first blockchain encyclopedia. Uh, it is a fork of Wikipedia. Um, and uh, we have decided to allow contributions from all different sources, from all uh, about uh, all different topics. Um, so we're much more open um, as to contributors and topics, uh, whereas Wikipedia tends to shut people down quickly. They tend to be much more closed than they used to be anyway. So we, we are, are going back to some of the, the more positive early um, tendencies, I guess, of, of uh, Wikipedia in that regard. Um, but uh, one thing that Wikipedia never had was this idea that you could have an article about absolutely anything. So I have an article about my left thumb just to demonstrate mm. that it is possible mm -hmm. to have an article about anything. And it changes the nature of, of the project. So if, if Everpedia really takes off in a big way, um, and it very well could, then um, – the the result might be the the mass creation of not five million articles in in the English um, encyclopedia, but five hundred or five billion articles about everything, all proper names, as one one of the co-founders put it. Um, anything that has a proper name would have an article that would be attached to it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so um, so here's the. Here's another thing that that is not part of that system yet, but which I think any system of of a collaborative encyclopedic encyclopedia writing has to have, and that is a um, a democratic dispute resolution system. 
Um, usually what happens, and this is why Wikipedia, one of the reasons why Wikipedia is so messed up is that um, there is no formalized way of, of uh, arriving at a decision about disputed questions. So you go there, you've, you've got a question uh, about, you know, what, what should the, the definition of racism be? You know, extremely hot topic. Um, it should be possible for people to, you know, come up with a bunch of different options and maybe have a, a round robin competition or something like that and, and um, actually get a legitimate choice. That's not what they do. They pretend that it is possible to um, have a consensus about um, about these things. and um, But the consensus is determined basically by the people in – power on the topic you know whoever whoever has the most seniority or seems to have the most uh, allies uh, or whatever um, those are the people who basically declare the consensus so it's not a consensus it's just uh, putting a, a cynical description on uh, what is not a, a consensus at all um, so no there it, it needs uh, the decision making process, needs to be reduced to very specific editorial decisions to be made and then taking legitimate legitimate votes um, based on that. So for, for me, I, I, I've never submitted an article to Wikipedia or I've never tried to make an amendment to Wikipedia. I think probably mm -hmm. maybe back in the day when I was a teenager, I'd have searched to see if I was on Wikipedia for any reason. But um, other than that, and other than using it for definitions, like probably most people mm -hmm. haven't. Can you just briefly explain what the process is? Let's say I want to, I go on and I search for racism and I think, oh, I, I have some some information which relates to this that I think is missing. How, how do I go about trying to edit the article? Um, well, it's in one way, it's as simple as it could possibly be. You don't even need to make an account. Um, except for protected accounts like the one that you were mentioning before. You just go to the page, you press the edit this page link, um, up, up comes an edit box, you type in what you want and you hit save. And your your edit will be saved immediately. And it used to work pretty much that way okay. back, back in the day. Um, and then uh, gradually things became more and more locked down. I think it really started happening maybe in like 2008 2010 and now it's just it's really difficult to to for for anybody who is not in an inner circle as it were to uh edit any important article at all really i mean you can propose edits and maybe if they're i don't know um but yeah it's hard it's interesting um, i, I cuz i would you, have thought you'd get banned I'll tell you something. If you were to go and, and edit the definition of racism in the article about racism, I'll bet you'd be banned just for trying. Really? Oh my yeah, God. I'm pretty sure. I am pretty damn sure. I'd love for somebody to prove me wrong. Someone try? There's going to be thousands of people listening right now. Someone go and try and edit a, a, an article about uh, about something contentious oh, uh, and send us a screenshot. Well, you know, don't do it with that article, okay? Not that no, one. No, no, do it about something, or do it about like, how to make jelly, or you know, something something that's kind of yeah, nondescript. Um, so no, no, no. It, it has to be something to 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 be a real test. It has to be something that is controversial. Just don't do racism, jeez. Right. Yeah, not that one. <laughs> not that one. Something else. Um, so I can immediately see, and the listeners will be able to think as well. If you allow people to make instant edits, the yeah. uh, opportunity for trolls there is is prevalent. It's obvious, right? That like you can just have someone go on and change every word of the to poo, and then it just destroys the article. Um, yeah. Oh, so, that's easy to fix. Okay. Yeah. Is there, there's a revert button? Is there of some kind? Exactly. I'm going to guess on the back end. Okay. Exactly. There's that's it's all made been made automatic. It's it's much easier for for you to to uh, revert somebody's illicit change than for the person to make it in the first place. Great point. So, yep, great point. Yeah. There's a lot more work. So there's an asymmetry in terms of work that someone who wants to yeah. destroy something has to do. Which is actually quite rare, isn't it? 
entropy doesn't usually work that way. But no, yeah, it's yeah. Good, good point. Um, so okay, we have we have that we have we have this particular system. Um, uh, but you've mentioned about the fact that you have this uh, this particular ideological leaning with regards to Wikipedia and why what it is and isn't allowing, and also the fact that you have this um less than fair distribution of power with regards to the editing of articles how right. how's that manifesting on the actual platform so if i go on i try to edit something just doesn't get allowed it doesn't save straight away so there's certain protected articles is that the way it works certain protected articles unless you actually have uh enough um you have made enough edits in the system you're not allowed to touch them at all um but uh you know it doesn't take that long to to get to the point where you actually are licensed in the system to to edit even the protected articles mm -hmm. um but uh yeah i mean i don't actually think that that in itself is is such a, a terrible problem because i mean it um there are popular articles need to be locked down for the simple reason that it's it ends up being just a, a chore to to clean up after the the vandals, right? Be constantly um, reverting uh, things, right? Exactly. That's exactly what happens. So there's. I'm I'm not complaining about that. Yeah. Uh, the the complaint that I would have um, uh, uh, is is the abuse of such a policy, the uh, locking down an an article um, so that that uh, people that you uh, who, who are outsiders, they have legitimate contributions to make to the article, but you disagree with them, those people are excluded. That's a, that's a problem. Yeah. That must be such a effortful process on the back end, on the, on the end of Wikipedia, to constantly be looking at what, what article falls within the purview of – um, our protected racket is this edit in line with our particular thinking does it blah blah like that's that's a serious unless i, I suppose unless it's just a it doesn't get through this is a very very hard wall well it's not like there's some centralized rules and 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 world view that is um that is enforced by everyone i mean to a certain extent that's Okay, it's kind of true, um, but not really. It, it, but it doesn't matter, right? Because because there's all kinds of of, uh, of people who have made their own little fiefdoms on their set of the set of articles that they sit on, and um, there's just a game that you have to play in order to get anything done on Wikipedia, and that game appeals to only a very few people. So. Uh, if I may, let me let me explain what's going on now with me because it's it's uh, it develops. You're basically asking what is my notion of the the perfect wiki or the perfect encyclopedia system. So here it is. So I I, I said that I have been the chief information officer of Everipedia. Well, actually, uh, as we speak now, I am no longer. Um, so I I resigned uh, in in. Um, uh, September in order to start the uh, Knowledge Standards Foundation. And we are going to be developing something that I call the Encyclosphere. Now, the Encyclosphere will be, uh, hopefully, um, have as a partner Everpedia, but also Wikipedia and Ballotpedia and Britannica and the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy and the rest of them, not necessarily partners in the sense that we'll have an, an, a written agreement with them. But what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, metadata about all of their articles and make it freely available as part of a public commons everyone can use. And if their articles are free, as in the case of Wikipedia, Everpedia, and Ballotpedia, and actually quite a few others. Um, if it is free, then you'll be able to see uh, the articles themselves. Uh, they will also be shared and made available as part of a public commons. Um, so what do I mean by a public commons? I actually mean something like the blogosphere. So you can, you know, right, if you start up a blog, um, if you don't 
tell it not to, then um, WordPress, for example, will publish your posts um, using uh, a standard called RSS, really simple syndication, right? Uh, so it makes what's called a feed, and that feed can be slurped up by by blog readers. And so you can go and look at Feedly, for example, um, and uh, Feedly will allow you to subscribe to different news sources and blogs, right? And then your blog gets collated in with other things that you might want to read and so forth. Well, we need to build that kind of system for encyclopedias. That's what needs to exist. See, if you want to work on an encyclopedia now, you have to work and, and you want to work on the, the uh, biggest, most influential encyclopedia in the world. Well, that's Wikipedia. And you have to work with that weird crew with their strange policies, um, with, you know, and and put up with their ideological editing and so forth, you have to work on one article per topic. They don't allow multiple articles, you know, competing articles or anything like that. Of course, right? Um, well, I submit that there are probably millions of people who, if given the chance would be writing encyclopedia articles about what they know if they could be submitted into a general commons in the same way that people submit blog posts into the general commons of the blogosphere. So what we need to do is create an encyclosphere that enables the millions of people who would like to write encyclopedia articles, but who don't want to put up with the BS of, of uh, Wikipedia. So that's the idea. That's what we're building. How do you get around? So you would presumably have multiple articles on the same topic, uh, multiple uh, encyclopedia entries on the same topic. For me, uh, I may be judging what I consider to be an encyclopedia incorrectly, but presumably there should eventually only be one for most things. Is that incorrect? Is that the wrong way to look at an encyclopedia? I, I, I think that's the wrong way to look at it. Interesting. Um, yeah, so here's the problem. Um, I, I personally am an objectivist about truth. I believe that there is such a thing as a mind-independent reality, and um, we can get uh, closer or farther away from, from a correct description of it. All right? So there's a mind-independent reality, and it constrains what we can know about it. Um, but uh, the problem is that there is no generally accepted methods and certainly no political entities that everyone can agree with for determining what that truth is, right? Mm. Um, and and uh, the best way to um, arrive at the truth is to get all the views on the table. Um, to be uh, um, as as open as possible to proposals, and then allow people to to rate those different um, articles, and then um, we can, if we have a, a proper user account system set up, right, then. Um, if I've confirmed that I am, in fact, Larry Sanger, then I could say things like, um, well, I'm an American, I'm male, I'm, you know, over 50, I have a, a PhD, I have degrees in philosophy, um, I'm a member of this organization, I have, I went to these colleges, and so forth, right? Um, and then based on those categories, um, or political party, religion, whatever, Based on such categories, you can say, okay, show me the top rated article according to all of the, you know, white male Republicans, or how about black female Democrats, mm -hmm. or, um, you know, on, on, and on certain topics, those categories probably won't matter. On other topics, they'll matter a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it would be really, really interesting, I think, to compare the top rated article about jihad according to 
let's say, um, uh, American college professors versus imams living in the Middle East. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I'll bet they would be different. Um, and it would be really interesting to compare those articles, right? What would the what would the top rated article according to those categories of people be? Um, and uh, so, not only would it enable us to articulate different points of view, it would actually incentivize by creating a, a worldwide, but completely decentralized, leaderless, centerless. Uh, contest to write the best article about every topic from every point of view. So you wouldn't be you wouldn't just get an article um, that is approved by American college professors or whatever. Mm-hmm. It would be the best one according to them, and there would be this constant competition to write uh, a better one. So. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of things to, to be said about that, but I'll, I'll just leave it at that and let you ask questions. I think it's cool. It, it kind of sounds a little bit like Reddit, I guess, where you kind of upvote, you upvote particular articles and the ones that are the most active, although I guess you wouldn't have the time degrading element of that. How- well, the difference, there's a difference. Uh, Reddit is uh, it doesn't constrain the, uh, the type of thing that is submitted to a subreddit, right? This is just encyclopedia articles. Understood. I agree. Um, how, how useful do you think that this would be, or are there any concerns about how useful this would be for a typical layperson? I want to find out about Christopher Columbus, right? I don't want to find out about the, I might do, but Broadly, I probably want the most aggregated understanding of what Christopher Columbus did. Now, Mm -hmm. there may be someone way, way out there who believes Christopher Columbus went back in time from the 22nd century and et cetera, et cetera. Do you understand what I mean? That you have this potential for disinformation to leak in there. Um, Conspiracy theories and alternative points of view, whilst valid, is is uh, an encyclopedia the place for those? Um, well, let's put it this way. Uh, some things that were once considered encyclopedia theories are now regarded as, as uh, true. Um, any, encyclo- any conspiracies uh, – sorry, I think I misstated that. Uh, so any conspiracy theories of the past, rather, um, th- th- they, they're now regarded as uh, – they have been discovered or are no longer – conspiracy theories they're just true mm-hmm. right but at one point there were conspiracy theories yeah right okay so it uh, the, the point is that that um uh yes there is a way to to approximate um the mainstream view on any subject right mm-hmm. um you just have to uh, adjust the groups of people uh, you know the groups of accounts that you're going to follow for purposes of of determining what the ranking of articles is. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean it's. I don't think that's necessarily going to be easy, but I think it's like it's a great idea, and I think it's one that we ought to be trying out. I think it sounds like a fascinating challenge, and I think depending on how sophisticated the data is which you can crunch on the back end, it would be absolutely fascinating to start to identify the differences between, you know, we're talking here broadly about quite nebulous differences between this is how someone may write something, ideology is difficult enough to define as it is, right? It's kind of Mm -hmm. very wishy-washy. But if you were able to really draw out in hard data where the exact differences lie between one interpretation or perhaps one platform's interpretation of a particular issue i think that would be that would be absolutely fascinating right right no i agree um really looking forward to it um is it technically yeah, so- is it technically a challenge for whoever whoever the unfortunate person is that's got a code to try and code this thing well um 
it's not one thing to code, um, it, except insofar as we're talking about the standards, mm. right? Because um, you know, there's when in, when you're talking about the blogosphere again to go to return to the analogy, I like to draw. It's um, there is no one set of software for the blogosphere. There's just the standards. There's mm. just the specification, RSS and Atom, and that's it. Um, so that actually is not going to be easy. Just making sure we have the right standards um, uh, expressed. So I, I've um, actually started a, a a WordPress blog. Actually, um, and you might not even be able to tell that it's a blog by the time we're done with it. We're adapting it so much, but um, yeah, it's going to be a a big old group discussion, but uh, a serious long form discussion about what the standards should look like. And I'm, uh, I've already started reaching out to a lot of people. Um, and we're going to try to get as many relevant experts involved um, and uh, make sure that that um, we've got everything nailed down as much as possible, but also in a way that 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 isn't um, that isn't interfered with by uh big money interests uh and and um and the power brokers of the world just don't want them involved at all so uh, we're not going to accept any corporate money we're not going to accept any money from governments um any any large contributions we accept um from individuals or um or maybe found family foundations or whatever we're going to actually check them out <laughs> going to make sure that they're not another epstein um you know that that kind of thing um we want the money to be clean and we want to make sure that it, there is no quid quo pro involved um so because knowledge is power um right and and the if we actually succeed in developing the the project that that I'm talking about, it, it could be extremely powerful actually, and um, I think there might be people after uh, after it to um, exert influence so that um, there's a special favors done to certain people, mm -hmm. um, and that's. Uh, that isn't going to happen. I want it to be as neutral of uh, and democratic of a standard as um, as the classic standards of of you know defining the internet have been. Understood. Yeah. So when you're talking about the knowledge standards uh, foundation itself, the actual uh, platforms I'm going to guess that you're dealing with, Wikipedia and stuff like that, in terms of repurposing their content and pulling them across, are they all within a format which is usable at the moment for you to rip that metadata out? Um, not really, no. So do, fact, you need, do you need to get them on board with what you're going to do? No, I have not necessarily. Understood. I mean, it would help. Yeah, um, we could probably use their help, but I don't think it will be necessary. Uh, in the case of of uh, Media Wiki, that's the name of the software that that Wikipedia uses. Cool. Um, um, yeah, we can um, <clears throat> uh, we can write basically a a scraper for Media Wiki sites that extracts the the right metadata. Um, Thing is, people do use Media Wiki in different ways, uh, so that that would itself need to be adapted. I'm pretty sure we're going to have to to adapt our, our scrapers for for basically all, all the different sites. And I'm not just talking about a, a meta search engine, though. To to be very clear, uh, what I want to exist is like uh, plugins for for um, for WordPress or for uh, browser. A browser plugins that you could use when you're working on a Medium article, for example, you press a button, um, it imports the data on the page into a form, and then you fill out other fields to make and make sure that everything is is correct, um, and then it republishes it on a feed in a feed, and then that feed could maybe another thing that it could do is ping one of the one of the feed aggregators, 
right? And that will pull in different encyclopedia feeds from different encyclopedias, but also, and this is the point, individuals. If you just want to put up an encyclopedia article about your hobby and you like, okay, I don't know a lot about a lot, but I can write, you know, a dozen articles about, about, you Table know, tennis or something. Cards. Yeah. 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 Train spotting. Yeah. Or whatever. Um, then, then, uh, uh, that's fine. You'll be able to do that. And they will be collated in and ranked against, um, uh, all the others. I think I, I I just can't get over how big of a technical undertaking this is. Like it sounds, yeah. it just sounds like because obviously from your side, philosophically, it it is very interesting. Um, another thing that I've got in my head at the moment is the is how similarly this matches up with what's happening with blockchain technology at the moment, uh, with with decentralization of currencies and stuff like yeah. that. Um, this is why I joined Everpedia. Right, um, and Everpedia is is still committed to to um, using this sort of system, but when I when I joined Everpedia, um, I, I said, okay, so this is the project I really want to work on. So I said, okay, well, you develop the ideas, and and, and you know you can give speeches about it, and that's what I did. But but uh, also early on, I said, eventually um, somebody is going to have to actually define the standards. The uh, common standards that are used, mm -hmm. if if for people are going to be submitting articles to the Everpedia network, mm -hmm. um, then then um, they would have to have common standards for doing that. And I eventually came to the conclusion that if it's really going to be open and not controlled by Everpedia Inc., then it actually has to be something that is built not on the blockchain but built on on the World Wide Web, basically. So just, it'll, it'll be basically a text feed, right? Um, and, uh, but of course, uh, you know, Everpedia will, in fact, be able to tokenize that work. Um, perhaps you'll have to do something special in order to get an article submitted to Everpedia. Maybe you'd have to have an Everpedia account in order to uh, earn IQ tokens for doing that. Right, but you're you're not at all wrong um, that that the whole idea of decentralizing content development um, is uh, is something that people are really excited about um, blockchain for enabling. So it's interesting, isn't it, that this particular pathway is acting across multiple different domains, so to speak, within tech. This this push towards decentralization. Yeah, it's just a it's a it's a movement basically to to um, take power back, um, take it out of the hands of Mark Zuckerberg and uh, and his ilk, right? Um, yeah, it's a I think it's a huge problem that they have. Um, decided to ignore our privacy rights. And um, even though our content is what they have built their, you know, multi-billion dollar corporations on, they insist on censoring us. It's the arrogance is mind boggling to me. Um, and uh, that wouldn't fly if you were talking about blogs would it yes yes there's no central blogging authority why the hell does there have to be a central tweeting authority or a central um you know uh social update facebook update kind of authority there yeah. doesn't have to be it's it's so, increasingly now i'm hearing this discussion about is it uh, pipeline versus platform or uh, pipeline versus publishing um which is the analogy which is being used that um they are either simply the delivery vehicle for whatever people put on there or they're a publishing platform which curates the content which goes out and apparently there's some very different rulings uh legislatively uh in terms of copyright in terms of a, a whole host of other things um which every platform right now youtube uh twitter there's again to go back to stephen crowder he unloaded a load of stuff in this one one video i watched the other week he was talking about he was showed his analytics on his youtube channel and apparently youtube has made a 
a, essentially a forthright declaration of the fact that they will be restricting political speech in the build up to the American election. And I was thinking like, it's, it's crazy. It, 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 it's absolutely insane. Yeah. Uh, and, but that's because maybe for me, I don't see the, I hope that these particular organizations are these big transparent enablers of, of, of information freedom. Right. That's what I think. But mm -hmm. as these organizations, that's what we all thought well, 10 yeah. years ago. Well, yeah, absolutely. And as these organizations grow, they need tax breaks, they need favors, they potentially get into some legislative problems, they need to favor off someone, someone needs to favor off them, they grow a bit more, they grow a bit more, they get someone on the board. And you can see how these sort of this, the beautiful princess of purity dressed in all white kind of gets a bit more mucky as time goes on and the dress gets a bit dirty and torn and then she's, you know, grown an extra arm and kind of become this horrible <laughs> gargoyle after a while. And it is, it's bizarre. And it, it's, you know, again, same that Roger McNamee said, the same thing Tristan Harris is talking about at the, the uh, mm -hmm. Center for Humane Technology and a lot of the people that that I'm very interested in at the moment, yourself you now added to that list, Larry. It, it's interesting mm -hmm. that this movement is toward decentralization towards more transparency and i wonder if we'll see some of the large organizations either dig their heels in aggressively try and claw at particular projects or what some of the reactions will be because there's no chance that they're going to go down without a fight okay i have a, a data point on that um it's Amazing. interesting um so uh last spring um I had this idea that we really need to decentralize social media. Um, and I gave a speech at South by Southwest in Austin, Texas. Um, and I, I asked just out into the public space. Um, I asked Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter, three questions. So question number one was, will you agree, Jack, to let us republish our tweets into a common data format that could be used on other platforms like Facebook or uh, brand new uh, platforms? Okay. And will you also enable us to import posts into our Twitter feeds on Twitter.com or the Twitter app um, from other sources. So say my friend isn't using Twitter, but is posting a lot on Minds, and I want to see all of all of the, the social media activity in one place. Will you enable us to import those posts? And then a third, I said, will you just generally give us a hell of a lot more control over the algorithm that or the algorithms that that uh, shape our uh, our feeds. Um, and uh, somebody, you know, wrote down the questions and, and tweeted them at Jack and Jack responded. He said, yes. So I, I actually clarified. I said, OK, here's question one. Do you agree? And said, yes. Here's a question two. Do you agree with that? Yes. Uh, question three. Do you agree with that? Yes. So he he was on the record on Twitter saying yes to the decentralization of Twitter. Um, it hasn't happened yet, though. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't happened yet. And I'll tell you more. I'll tell you something else. I had a, a half hour long discussion. I So um, out of the blue, I got a, a, a message from Jack um, a direct message and proposing that we we uh, chat. So I had a half an hour long discussion with him on the phone. And he read to me what sounded like a, uh, a plan that somebody had written um, that uh, went into details um, uh, about the sorts of things that I had um I asked questions about like this is I mean it sounded great like it was it was a real plan of course they haven't talked about this plan um, That's publicly. serious stuff you've got Jack Dorsey the CEO of Twitter on the phone for half an hour to speak about something you brought up at South by Southwest to do with decentralizing Twitter yep that is that's, no, but, that's big that's really big 
You would think it's big, but nobody ever wrote any any uh, uh, news stories about it. Ever. I think it's pretty big. I thought it was pretty big too. Um, so uh, nothing nothing happened, and and that kind of pissed me off. So I didn't really pull any punches. Um, how long when ago, how I, long ago was this? Sorry. Oh well, the 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 conversation. I think it was in March, or I think it was March this year. Um, yeah, cool. Yeah. So it's, I mean, in the in the tech world, things move fast, but in a big company like Twitter, I guess there's probably a f- like things move pretty slow, right? It could st- it could still happen. It could still happen for sure. Okay, but there's another thing. Okay, um, uh, I I decided to do a social media strike. Um, in uh, in July, July fourth and July fifth, um, I invited people to sign a declaration of digital independence. You can still <laughs> sign it. I love it. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, you should read it and sign it. Um, it's still up. It's on my blog, LarrySanger.org. Just search for Declaration of Digital Independence. And I told people a uh, strike on July fourth and fifth, um, and a bunch of people did. I don't know, thousands and thousands of people did, and they, they were declaring that they were on strike and so forth. I got, there were dozens of articles written about it too. Um, I was on CNN, I was on um, Fox talking to, um, uh, oh, what's his name? Um, anyway, yeah. Somewhere. Um, yeah. um and, and um, so it was, uh, as far as getting the idea out there um, goes, that was a, a, a success. I'm, not that many people actually went on strike, but it was still it was, it's a fair, fair few. Mm. And um, here's the interesting thing. After that, like beginning toward the end of July and since then, uh, Facebook has gone down from uh, an Alexa rank of three to five. Twitter has declined from 11 to 30 today. Their Alexa rank is 30 today. It used to be 11, right? Um, I, I've written an article about this on my on my blog. Um, there's various others that that are big decliners, like um, uh, Instagram is another one has gone down like 25 or 30 places. Um, and this, oh no, this, it, this Alexa ranks publicly available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just well, it's, Alexa. I've never heard of it. It's, it's the ranking of how many people are asking Alexa to do a particular thing. Is that correct? Nope. Oh, nope. What is and, it? and it's 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 the it's the the uh, rank ranking of websites. It's not Alexa. It's also a, a an Amazon product, but yeah. actually predates the the Alexa device. So what is it? Uh, it's a uh, it's a web traffic. Um, service cool. basically understood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, I think it's so. This is much more serious the, than people not the asking biggest. their smart speaker to not to to access Instagram. This is general traffic yes. going down. This is general traffic going down. Oh, Wikipedia has gone from the, uh, a, a ranking of uh, it is it used to be the fifth most popular website. Now it is the ninth, just in the last uh, six to eight weeks. Have there been any um, notable uh, ascensions? Yeah, there, there have been a few. Um, it's interesting. Uh, Bing has gone up, the search engine. Yeah. Microsoft Office has gone up. eBay, a little bit. Stack Overflow has gone up a lot. Um, Stack Exchange has gone up. Apple, for some for whatever reason. They released a new mm-hmm. iPhone, that's why. <laughs> yeah, what happens when you release a brand yeah, new iPhone. You're probably right. You're probably right. Um, medium, and then uh, then all kinds of of uh, mainstream traffic sources. Uh, sorry, traffic sources. Mainstream news sources have gone up. Um, I, I think they've absorbed traffic from um, declining social media sites. But this is my theory. Yeah, this is my yeah, theory. Yeah. So well, I mean, BBC, ESPN, New York Times, Washington Post, Fox News, Breitbart. Wall Street Journal have all gone up significantly in the last three months. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, another one that, that has uh, gone down a lot is uh, Pinterest. Um, Pinterest, so right. it's I don't get oh, people. Pinterest uh, never I, being I, I good. Agree. Quora, how the mighty has fallen. 
Quora used to be at rank 82, and it's now down to I don't know, 200 and well, let's see what the latest is here. Um, just a second. 262. Wow. Did you see... It's uh, dropped 180 points. Did you uh, see the, the big hoo-ha between them and Jordan Peterson about a month ago? I'm not sure I did. Okay, so um, Jordan Peterson's book, 12 Rules for Life, was originally based on a Quora post. Someone asked him, what are the um, best piece of advice that you would give someone for life? And he wrote, okay. he wrote 40 maxims or aphorisms, whatever you want to call them. He wrote a list of I 40. I remember that. Yeah. yeah okay. So I've got the poster of all 40 outside uh, in my in my hallway next to my bathroom. And um, hey. so he wrote these 40, and it's like one of the most engaged Quora posts of all time. It's legendary. And um, it got taken down uh, because, it, it, because it contravened community standards. And <laughs> then he appealed it. Very, very, very publicly screenshotting uh, what the processes he's going through with Quora, and um, they came back to him and said, "We're very sorry. We're not going to reinstate your post because um, we've reviewed it manually, and it does indeed contravene our community standards. So it's down, and you are never getting it back." And he put he put this post up online. His uh, followers reacted appropriately. Um, and then he got a DM from someone who worked at the standards uh, department at Quora, just a just a guy, some guy, and he was like, "Give me, give me a couple of days, like just hold on, give me a couple of days." And again, he's publishing this, publishing publishing this exchange with this particular this this gentleman, and he reinstates it, but it not at, not until they've been through this big process that just every single time that this happens, every time that. <laughs> Stephen Crowder's article gets locked down or the Douglas Murray, right? I released a podcast with him today. You know who he is. He doesn't have a blue tick on Twitter. I've got a blue tick on Twitter. And I went on a TV, <laughs> I went on a TV program seven years ago and I've got a blue tick. Uh, it's fucking I, I didn't have a blue tick until, until uh, May, until after I talked you to created, Jack. You created Wikipedia. Oh yeah, that's it. Excuse me, by the way, <laughs> Look, I just got one favor to ask you, mate. While we're while we're having a quick chat, can you just sort me out with that blue tick thing, please? Um, so yeah, like, how doesn't Douglas Murray have a blue tick? And it, it's right. Did you listen to Jack Dorsey when he went on Joe Rogan twice, both times? I did, well, I, I listened to one of them for three hours. Yeah, was, the, was that the one where he had uh, himself and Tim? Uh, what's his name? Not Tim Urban. Yes, Tim Pool. Tim Pool. Yeah, yeah. Did you listen to that one? Yeah. Yes, I did. It right, was really fine. good. The, the one before that was pointless. Um, so oh, okay. just as well. But yeah, that one with Tim Pool and Tim's right. Like it yeah. always appears to be to, to be kind of viciously left leaning. It always appears to be the people that ha hold a slightly more conservative viewpoint or don't perhaps adhere to the social justice mentality as much yeah. that, that are the ones that are suffering. So yeah, it's uh, every time that this happens, it just makes people lose faith in tech. And do you know the one the one group that Roger McNamee of the whole thing, this big conversation, and there's this footnote at the end. And I was like, so tell me, like, we, we need to use technology. I want to get an Uber. I want to direct myself from where I am to the hotel that I'm staying in tomorrow night. What yeah. What's the best of the bad bunch? And Roger's um, diamond in the rough was Apple. So he said that mm -hmm. Apple is genuinely committed to user privacy. He said that it, um, it works incredibly hard to do a number of things that are losing the money. So he said Apple Maps loses mm -hmm. tons of money. Because so once you've finished your journey, it splits it up into 10 pieces and then scatters them across the, the God knows where, d d yeah. deletes them so they can't be found, people can't track your route, all this sort of stuff. But across the board, it would appear, you know, the old establishments of the internet, Wikipedia, Twitter, YouTube, Google, fucking Quora, like... Yeah. They're not. They're no longer the same sort of trusted institutions, and I guess that's exactly yeah. where things like the Knowledge Standards Foundation and and other organisations, there is a, a gap in the market for someone to come in and first off create a standard, and then secondly be a voice of reason. Yeah, but it's it's actually uh, the way I would put it is um, there are things that are considered markets 
that didn't used to be considered markets and should no longer be. Um, do we talk about the blog market? Right? <laughs> no. Do we talk about the email market? No. They're just communication media. Um, and, and of course, you can make blogging and email products. There's nothing wrong with that. And in the same way, you'll be able to to make, uh, an, you know, encyclopedia apps and things like that. There will be nothing wrong with that either. But I, I, I had to comment on on what you were saying about, uh, about uh, Apple. Um, so, I mean, I am not that impressed. I mean, I agree that Apple talks a good game um uh, I, and and have taken some public stands that indicate that they are more serious about about uh privacy but there's a lot of things uh that they do that are not uh are not that great for privacy and and um and security um uh, so i actually recently bought uh i pre-ordered and will soon have de delivered the first mass produced uh linux phone so it's made by a company called purism um and uh, it's called the librem 5 it's the first linux phone oh, wow. uh, how how cool is that it's the, it's a third phone ecosystem um, it's a third smartphone ecosystem you'll be able to actually uh access the the a command line for your phone um you be able to plug it in and show show the the desktop uh, you know run it like a computer um and uh you know anybody will be able to make apps and you know have to get special permission from apple to to run the apps and um so i'm i'm excited about that i I think that's really how it ought to be. I don't know if it'll ever get as big as as uh, you know Apple and Android, but well, you can always hope. <laughs> convenience convenience is so high, though, right? For users, yeah, they, they, it it needs to be the the kiddie sandpit version of of whatever it is that we're talking about. It's the same reason that I'm not running Linux on my on my laptop. I'm using I'm using a MacBook because oh, it, it, I'll uh, tell you. Linux is easier than Mac. It is. <laughs> I'm telling you. I wouldn't have said that when I first first installed Linux, like back in 2002 or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, I, I installed like Red Hat Linux, and this is it was definitely for geeks only then. <laughs> now, yeah. Now it's totally different game. I, I basically, it's easier to install. Linux, first of all, than it is to install Windows, uh, at least some versions of Linux, yeah. like like Ubuntu and, and, and a few others. Um, but the actual day-to-day -day use, if you if you wanted grandma to to have a daily use machine and she didn't know about computers and wasn't used to anything, you'd give her Linux um, and it would it would be better. She's never going to have to go to the command line anymore. <laughs> Linux rocks now. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. Could you imagine it, if you gave your grandma Linux for a couple of months and you came back <laughs> and she was just like she had a vertical a, a portrait external monitor and she was doing hardcore coding? And you're like, grandma, have you been on have you been on Reddit at all? I, I, have, I have indeed. So, yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome. That's funny. That would La be awesome. Larry, yeah. today's been awesome. Can you tell we've we've spoke about your blog and the Knowledge Standards Foundation, where can people go? They want to learn a little bit more. Where should they head? Um, well, I, I hope they would do uh, a couple of different things. Um, um, you can look uh, at, at at my blog if you're just interested in my thoughts about life, the universe, and everything. Actually, mostly, mostly tech and education because I homeschool my boys. Um, but... Um, uh, if you want to just like keep up with me, then please um, subscribe uh, or follow me on Twitter. It's L Sanger, and then um, also on Twitter is uh, K S underscore Found, as in Knowledge Standards Foundation. Um, if you could follow that, I just put out a, a call for people to to like um, to follow that, and for some reason it it went viral, and I went from sixty followers to like I've almost got one hundred and fifty now, or I sorry uh, uh, one thousand five hundred. Um, so in just a couple of days, not bad growth. So yeah, yeah, that's your mate. That's your mate Jack. That's your mate Jack going. Ah, Larry's a good guy. 
I had a good chat with him a couple of months ago. We'll keep on. We'll keep on. We'll let the algorithm work for him for another couple of months. I, any any sort of of image that I share is is locked down as sensitive content. <laughs> I swear to God, oh I just said I just posted something. Um, it, it was just, just saying thank you for putting us up uh, over a thousand. That's what it said. That's all it said, and it was marked as sensitive content. Some X-rated sharing that you've obviously got going on there, Larry. I've, I've had a, f- a few ex-guests that have done that as well. Um, but yes, everything that we've spoken about, Knowledge Standards Foundation, uh, your blog, Larry, and your Twitter will be linked in the show notes below. Uh, I'm Good. excited. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens over the, the next few the next few months. It'll be uh, it'll be exciting to see if you guys manage to change the the space of the encyclos encyclosphere. And cyclosphere, just like the blogosphere and cyclosphere. I love it. Larry, thank you so much for your time.